What's up guys and welcome back to another day in the life of a real estate investor. Today should be a pretty interesting day so I wanted to take you guys along with me. We're starting the day off here at the office but we're getting ready to head to a foreclosure auction and actually we're going to go to the foreclosure house first and meet with the individual that's getting foreclosed on. I know that sounds crazy but I'll explain more in a minute. Also, I may have to run to the bank and get out $130,000 in actual cash because of a proof of fund issue. Again, I'll explain more of that later. Then after that, I'm going to update you on a bunch of the houses that we have out. Hunter, the big house out in the country that's over 3,000 square feet, that's in contract and getting ready to close. 21st Street, the house with all the Fiesta wear, is making great progress. Clyde Street, that I don't think you guys even know about yet, but it should be one of our highest returns on investment to date. And also the fourplex, the house that we had the lady living in that refused to leave she is supposed to be out today so i'm going to drive by there today as well and see if she's out of there all right guys let's get the day started all right guys i hope the exposure is okay because i can't talk long i don't want to uh you know make it awkward here but this is the house behind us it's a nice a-frame house little army truck over here but we're talking with him now give him all his options and when we're out of here i'll update you more on this exact situation All right, so we just went to the bank and got the check and now we're at the courthouse. So I wanna to explain to you guys this situation real quick because I know it's weird that we actually met with the owner of the foreclosure. So how this works is the lawyer that is foreclosing on the property got in touch with us. And they reached out to us and told us they've been trying to work with this guy and trying to help him save his home, but it's just not possible. He's $13,000 in the rears or behind on his payments and there's nothing they can really do for him. So what we did is we reached out to him and said, hey, if we can come look at the property, maybe we can work something out with you. So we went out there, we looked at it. Now we can't do to some predatory lending laws, lease the property back to him or sell the property back to him on rent to own. And he's definitely not gonna be able to get a loan for it because he's just defaulted on this house. So what we did is we told him, hey, if the house is in good condition, this is what we can do. We can buy it at auction and we can give you a chance to have some friends or family purchase the house for you and then lease it or rent it back to you that way or just buy it right out for you. It doesn't really matter, but that's how you would get your house back. Also guys, when we do this, we're a lot nicer than the bank or any other type of buyers because we're gonna go over there, we're gonna work with you, we're gonna give you more time than the rest to move out, get your stuff together. Oftentimes we won't charge you anything for staying if you're out in 30 days. If you need longer than that, we work some price out that works out for both parties. But yeah, we went out there and talked with him. It's a really sad situation. We wish we could just give him the money and he could keep his house, but that's not how it works. So we're here at the auction right now. We think the house is gonna go for as little as $50,000, which is a great deal. We think he owed almost 120 on it. So it would work out best for both. If we buy it for 50, he purchases it back from us for a great price. Let's say it's $100,000. Yes, we would make good money on that and quickly, but he would still get his house back and he would save $20,000 on the total loan. So it's really a win-win. So now we're just waiting on the auctioneer to come here. Tell us the bid, we bid on it, and then we'll start working with him and his family and see if we can work out a deal. Real quick, one more thing. I do want to say that there is a chance that he does not get this property back. We hope that's not the case, but I do want to be upfront and honest. We're not doing this just to kick him out. Somebody would buy the house anyway. But if his family will not buy the house for him or a friend will not buy the house for him, he's under the understanding, we've already talked with him, that he would lose the property and he would need to move out. And we'll give him plenty of time to do so, usually 30, 45 days, sometimes 60, depending on on how long he needs, so we'll keep you updated about that. By virtue of the authority vested in the trustee by that certain credit line deed of trust dated April 23rd, 2010. Do we have to bid one dollar over? No, you don't. So, so fifty thousand seven hundred All right, guys, so we're back at the office now. We obviously won that house at auction. Now we're gonna sit around the table and figure out the best plan going forward for that house. So he, he can come in with himself, but he needs to have a letter from his parents or a phone call from his parents or something from his parents saying, hey, they're going to the bank right now. They're going to be working on it. But also here is here is $500 to $800 to hold in um, escrow. All right, so we had our meeting. This is what we came up with for the guy that is currently living in the foreclosure. He has to come into this office by Wednesday, and he has to have some type of letter or something saying that his parents will enter into an agreement to purchase the home. So they have to start the loan agreement by Friday of the following week. But Wednesday, he needs to come in and say that his parents do want to purchase it. We also put something in there called a 48-hour limitation on correspondence. This is a huge thing you might want to add in contracts or agreements with anybody you do business with, uh, but especially in this case. So people can go black sometimes and you just don't hear from them. So you text them and they take five days to text or respond back. 
that makes the process take forever and it's very frustrating. So we put a 48 hour limit in there that he has got to get back to us within 48 hours or this contract is void and we will just enter into the part where he would have to leave the premises. So again, guys, I cannot stress this enough. We are not being predators here or taking advantage of anybody. The house was going to get sold regardless, but now we have entered into an agreement or we will enter into an agreement that will be a win-win for everybody. Yes, we are going to make good money. We bought the house for around $50,000 and we are going to sell it back to them for 90. But he owed about 120 on the house. So if he buys it back from us, he gets to keep his house and he'll save roughly 30 to $40,000 over what his mortgage was anyway. So that is a huge win for him and a huge win for us. Now, if the agreement doesn't happen, if he's unable to purchase it, he will have to leave the house, but we're also offering $2,000 to him for leaving. So if he cannot get the loan, if his parents cannot give the loan, we will give him $2,000 in cash to help him move out, leave the premises, help with moving expenses, whatever the case may be. All right, that's it for that house. Now I'm heading to the bank so we can show that proof of funds on the other property. I'll take you guys with me. All right, guys, I'm switching over to my phone camera here for a minute just because it's easier while I'm driving. I hope the audio and video and all that's okay. So good news and bad news. Good news is we didn't have to get all, all the cash. Uh, that's bad news because I think it would have made for great content if I got out $130,000 in cash. I could have done a sweet Instagram post with it. But anyway, uh, the other bank is literally like half a mile up the road. So this proof of funds thing is all types of problems for us. One, we try not to keep that much cash laying around in any given account. Uh, we always want to have that money moving. Luckily, I just closed out a house. Y'all probably remember I closed out Wyndham about last week, so I had some cash in my account. So I got out 122000 Here's the check right here, so you know I'm not fibbing. 122000 out of my account. Going to go put it in our business account. See, what I should do, guys, is I should charge Andrew and Steve, my partner's interest on this. It'd only be out for about three to four days, so I'm thinking somewhere around, what, 10 grand? That's that's probably about right. But anyway, uh, the, also, the other problem with keeping that much cash, you start getting over the $250,000 FDIC, that's how much the bank will insure you per social, not per bank account. So I used to think it was per bank account and all was good, but that is not the case. I could have $500,000 amongst 10 different bank accounts, but they're only going to protect me up to the $250,000. So that's the problem with having cash sitting around. One, it's not earning money. Two, it's a hassle. And three, it's not insured. So uh, people with much higher net worths and have much bigger operations than we have, I'm sure they have that problem. Uh, but we're not there yet. I guess technically it's a good problem to have. But yeah, if you guys didn't know what proof of funds were or why we had to have it, that's why we have to have it to show the auction house in order to get the property in our name. Otherwise, they think we might just be lying and saying we have the money when really we don't. All right, guys, I'm at the other bank now. I'm going to deposit this check, and then we're going to go check on the fourplex. All right, guys, I'm over here at Russell. This is the multi-unit I've been telling you about. Many of you have been following me for a long time. You know that we bought this about three months ago. It's kind of in a holding pattern, and the reason being is a little bit of our mistake. There was one tenant in it. We took her word for it that she'd be out in 30 days. Well, she didn't even try. She didn't move anywhere. So we had to go down to the courthouse and get some paperwork filed against her to get her kicked out of here because we have no lease with her. Her unit is not really in livable condition. It's really unsafe. So that takes another 30 days for her to actually be out. Today is that day. I'm over here right now and it does not look like she's budged once more. So unfortunately, we may have to get the cops involved. It's very unfortunate. We don't want to kick anybody out on the street, but we have now given her over 60 days to try to find a new place to live and we even called some places for her. I guess she can't help everybody and I actually just remember I'm no longer the investor on this multi-unit I was going to buy it originally and hold it as my first investment property but it just needs too much work and it's more than I want to get into on my first holding property so we have transitioned to, to another investor since then but either way I wanted to give you an update on it and I'm gonna run you through the units real quick and then we'll get out of here this is the outside it's four units we picked this up for $15,000 at auction I want to say we got about another 10,000 in it to date and I'm gonna show you what we've done all right, we'll go ahead and start with the downstairs units. This is the living room of one of the units right here. We've actually already paid someone to demo these units out, so I'm not sure why there's still trash in here. I do understand the construction debris because one thing we have paid someone to do is replace all the subflooring and the kitchen and bathrooms down here. It was just rotted out and it wasn't installed correctly where they were trying to repair it. So we just removed all the kitchen cabinets and countertops, put in new subflooring. We are not trying to fully rehab these units. What we want to do is get them in good enough condition that they're a good investment for an investor. We want to sell this to another investor that does holdings 
and does multi-unit projects. They could come in here and they could buy this from us for let's say $50,000. Then let's say they have another $50,000 in total repairs for all four units to get them livable and rented. That's $100,000 all in. We'll say these units rent for about $650 a piece once they're finished. We'll call it $500 a piece just to take off taxes and vacancy and insurance and all that. That puts it at $2,000 a month in income on a $100,000 investment. That is very good. And I'll take you upstairs just real fast. To the left is the unit that is still occupied. And to the right is the other unit. And this one already has carpet in it. It's not in great condition, but this will give you more of an idea what the units will look like finished. They're all four, one bedroom, one bath, and a kitchen. So that's why the rent's so low, around 650. But again, you put $50,000 in here, you'll get a great return. It should be a great investment for someone. All right, that's it for Russell. All right, sorry if I'm a little bright again, but we're over here at Clyde Street. This is another one of Rihanna and I's investments. I just came over here to check on it. We picked this up for $10,000. This was not an auction. The lady inherited it. She lived in it for a little while, and then she wanted to move down to Myrtle Beach with her sister. She said, give me $10,000, and I'm out of here. So we were there with the cash. So we had this in contract, or at least verbal contract, just last week for $37,000. That would have been incredible. That would have been a gross $27,000 return on investment on this house. Uh, that would have been so awesome. But unfortunately, we haven't heard from him lately. I'm gonna run you through the bottom floor real quick. This vlog's getting a little long, so I don't wanna keep showing every inside of every house. Boom, what do you think of that? Garbage disposal to trash can transition. You've never seen that before. All right, guys, now we're over here at 21st Street. You probably remember this house. It was full of stuff. It's actually a Fiesta warehouse. We are still selling a bunch of that stuff on eBay. There was hundreds and hundreds of plates and bowls and cups of Fiesta ware. They were selling on eBay. We're hoping to make a few thousand dollars off of that stuff. But anyway, there's an update over here. Uh, it is going extremely well. We are actually doing the floors right now. This house could be complete at the end of next week if it was not for the countertops. The countertops are another two weeks out. We are putting granite in here. They just measured a couple days ago. And it's gonna take two to three weeks tops to get them in and installed. So that's kind of what we're waiting on. I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough real quick and then we'll get out of here. All right, here we go. Steve's actually here working on the door right now. See, I'm just kind of a Suedo project manager. He's the real guy. I just defer to him, but look this. These floors are coming out incredible right here. We painted all the rooms. I can't go back there right now because the floors are wet. Look at that. Don't they look good? I don't know if y'all remember what they looked like before, but it was not like this. We still have a few more coats to put on them. Then we replaced this whole entranceway with tile right here. And it's really nice lighting. And that goes into the kitchen. And then this is what we're waiting on, the countertops. Countertops and new cabinet faces or doors for that front side right there. But this is going to look so good when it's complete. If y'all remember before, this was full of trash. But yeah, that's the update over here, just waiting on countertops. So maybe two more weeks and this thing will be ready to hit the market. All right, let's get out of here. I'm gonna to try to take you guys up to Hunter. I don't know if we're gonna have time or not because I have another meeting, but I'll let you know in just a minute. Boom, another door to thermostat transition. Just showing off my creative genius. Well, because my meeting ran over, I was not able to make it out to Hunter, but we're gonna throw in some footage right now while I talk over it, and Hunter is going extremely well. In fact, we are scheduled to close that on Wednesday of next week. I've known this for a while, but I did not want to jinx myself because it is a very, very high return profit for both the company and Rihanna and I since we're the investors on it. The house came out extremely well. We did not have to do a full flip on it. We just gave it to somebody for a really good deal and they're excited to move in on Wednesday and we're excited to get those checks. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up the video. I hope you liked this vlog. I know it was all over the place and I went all over the county, multiple counties in fact, but that's just kind of how it goes. You know, we have to go to the courthouse one second, meeting clients the next, and then run out to check on houses. But I love it. I wouldn't want to do anything else right now. Um, I'm loving this real estate investing world that I'm in. I love my partner 
partners. I love the business that we're doing, and I hope you guys can see that in these videos. If there's anything else you guys want to see, comment below. I am almost to 1,000 subscribers. In fact, I think I'm at like 993 or 994. So hopefully by the next video, I will have hit my goal of 1,000 subscribers, and I'm super excited about that. Thank you for all of you that have subscribed and liked my videos and showed support. It really means a lot to me. And yeah, that's it, guys. I'll see you on the next vlog. If you want to see behind-the-scenes stuff, follow me on Instagram at John Schuller, and I'll see you guys on the next video.